exercising for five minutes can can change your mental health, right? So you don't need to necessarily be going and you know doing a 45 minutes of deadlifts, right? Like just go outside and walk your dog and, and feel better. And so, as so I just believe, I mean, movement in any any way that we can do it um, is, is strongly encouraged. So if you are somehow in, in the encouraging movement space, like. Come on, Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to this week's Escape Your Limits podcast. Today, we interview a former candy industry specialist who previously lobbied government relations at the National Confectioners Association. Serving as the industry's voice in Washington since 2011, she successfully lobbied to have confection manufacturing deemed essential during the pandemic. In contrast, she switched over from the candy industry to the fitness industry and is now the first female CEO in Ursa's 40 year history. And we're intrigued to see if she can make fitness as essential as a piece of chocolate. In this week's episode, we cover several topics, including her first 100 days as CEO and her plans to evolve the organization, what role politics plays in fitness, and the importance of health and fitness representatives on Capitol Hill. So please welcome the CEO of Ursa, Liz Clark. Happy International Women's Day. Yes, Look who we found here yes. at the Connected Health and Fitness <laughs> Summit, uh, Liz Clark, who's you know famous for a bunch of reasons. We won't go into those ones. Um, <laughs> but let's see, what have you done? Woman, you're a woman. It's International what Women's Day. Yeah. Yes, that's what you hear. Um, you're 100 days into, or a little bit north of that, uh, running Ursa yeah. as the first female CEO, president, and I have to say, you've made quite the impact. So tell us is about that. Good that. Or bad? No, good, oh, okay. good. <laughs> I mean, this is a big institution, and we were just saying our industry is really only 50 years old. Yeah. Ursa's 40 years old, and you're the first female to come in. The industry's been changing. We've had a pandemic. We've had all sorts of things, and you've come into this, and we've really felt the positive effects of that. So tell us what it's been like for you. It's been an extraordinary amount of work. We've had advocacy, you know, yeah. does fitness matter? Is it essential? What are we doing about Capitol Hill? You know, all of those things, um, as well as the industry has shifted. Yeah. And so you've been very aware of that. We're here at a connected uh, fitness event, which is, uh, you know, in the old days, unusual for Ursa to be at. So there's so many, so much change yeah. and you arrive at a really important time. So do you want to perhaps unpack some of that for us? Yeah, I mean, that's a lot to unpack, <laughs> I know, right? But, but I mean, you can do it. <laughs> no, listen, I think the reality is it's been a really fantastic journey for me, uh, you know, from literally from day one of my interview process to today. And I keep meeting such fantastic people in this industry that are passionate and that are change agents, right? And I was hired to change this organization. I think we learned a hard lesson that we weren't relevant when we needed to be and we didn't have friends in the right place when we needed to be. And, and as we were saying earlier, we collected and we did as much as we could and we did some really good work and we laid a lot of groundwork and we did that really quickly. Mm -hmm. A lot of work that would take people a decade mm -hmm. to do. And mm -hmm. I think our industry did it in a year and a half and that just shows the testament of kind of the core of who we are and how mm -hmm. we operate, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of changes that, you know, have been needed to be made and we've gotten a lot of those underway. And so we needed to do some organizational changes, mm -hmm. tough, but but got those done and they might not be done, I don't know. And, uh, you know, continue to pull off our trade show. So we had a great show in Dallas and now we're gonna have a fantastic one in Miami. In Miami, really we're gonna be there, very that. excited, yeah. yeah. Um, and so there's just, because it's about the people. I think this industry is really fantastic about these people. And you talk about Women's Day, and I think about even Greta Wagner, who led the effort for the search committee, and, and people like Carrie Keppel on it, on our board, and, and Anastasia, um, God bless her, in, in Russia right now, really struggling. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic collection of people with a fantastic amount of expertise. And even just at this conference, talking about connected fitness and what it means about hybrid platforms in the future and, and all of that, which is why one of the things I've said so much is we need to rebrand this organization. We really need to be the umbrella for not only who we are today, but where we want to go in the future. And So Matt and I have yeah. been sketching some new logos. You Would got you some? like to see? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's on the table. Yeah. It's like, don't charge me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but it's about, you know, what is going to be our identifier that is not only the brick and mortars, but it is the technology companies. Um, and it's everything else in the space, right? It's it's like, what is the role of recovery? And how does that play into things? And so if we can be like the glue and the gel that brings all these people together, which I know we can, especially in Washington, D.C., and to deliver sort of this coalition of that power 
to our lawmakers, we'll never be left behind again. We mm -hmm. won't. Um, and, but it takes time. I mean, it's about a relationship, and you know, you don't create a relationship necessarily overnight. You gotta, you gotta keep showing up. Well, You're sometimes dating. you do, but you that's do, another yeah. kind of and relationship. Maybe, yeah, maybe those yeah. last, maybe they don't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we'll talk about that. A couple more drinks. Yeah. But I think you know, it's about you know finding the right allies and the right voices. And even I was talking to Mike about. Um, the Physical Activity Alliance and, and what they're doing there and, and ways that we can partner on that and be doing activities on Capitol Hill around physical activity and getting Hill staffers engaged. It's just, I mean, we are barely scratching the surface of, of what is to come and what could potentially come. I'm so fired up. So I feel like we're dancing with a devil because you came from sugar, <laughs> right? Candy. Candy. candy, candy. candy. Sorry, yes, wrong yes, country. Yeah, yeah, candy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, there's big candy and there's big sugar, and they're like right. enemies. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so how are you using yeah, that yeah. skill set? Because obviously you're a dynamite, and I joke that you close the bar and then open the next morning session and, and all the rest of it. You've got all this energy. Like, what have you brought and what have you learnt from previous work, previous industries, and brought to fitness? Right. So it was kind of funny when I came in and people were, like, "Ooh, how are we having this woman go from from literally candy to fitness?" And I said, "Because it's a, it's a skill set, right? And it's about." advocating for an interest. And so that was my job at Candy, was to advocate for Candy's interest, and this is my job here to advocate for our interest. And it just so happens that I am aligned with these interests. There's plenty of people that have this job um, for other industries, and you know, you could be the president of the Rock, Sand, and Gravel Association. I'm not sure how much you care about rock, sand, and gravel, <laughs> right? But your job is to advocate for it. So the fact that I was, I've was i landed in one that I am so passionate about and believe in, and have been you know, physically active my whole life has been like amazing. So the skills, right, I, I think there's a lot of soft skills. There's, mm -hmm. there's policy skills and, and things like that. But what I'm finding, so many people in our industry just want to be heard and they mm -hmm. want to feel relevant. So it's why I've been on this learning and listening tour. It's why I'm doing 12 meetings a day. It's why I'm working 18 hours a day because I want to hear you. And I want to know the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, what have we done really well? Where we can we improve and where have we sucked, you know? And, and it's all on the table. And so I'm getting fantastic feedback from, from folks. And so, and, and it's re-energizing people. And even just today having lunch with, with Angel down, yeah. uh, you know, in LA here that he was- And where were you? Oh, well, the Beverly Hills Club. Which is very Angel. Yeah, yes, yes, so thank you Angel. Thank you Angel. Yes. yes. Where's our dinner invite? Where's our lunch invite? <laughs> I think I cra I, I kind of crash his you know, spot, yeah. But, you know, even just talking to somebody like that who's been in the industry, like, again, since the inception, and um, that are, and these folks are excited about the future, excited about the rebrand, excited. So everybody's sort of, and it's not to say we did anything necessarily terribly wrong, but it's time, it's time to be fresh and new and reflect not only who we are today, but where we want to go in the future. So based on your listening, what were, what are some of the key milestones, I guess, of your 100 days? Like, what did you focus on in your first 100 days? Well, listen, and it's what I'm focusing right now is the financial stability of the organization. Right. I mean, it's it's not lost on anybody that we had to cancel our 2020 show. Right. Everyone felt the pain of that. Yep. We obviously organizationally, but then a lot of our sponsors, yep. a lot of people on the ground, yep. and I can't apologize enough for it. it. You know, nobody saw a pandemic coming, you know, five days before a trade show. So we're digging out from that, and we needed to make major organizational changes mm -hmm. with that. And so evaluation of literally everything, uh, you know, like it's like a car inspection. You know, I'm looking at every valve, every seat, every nut, every bolt, and, and where we can be the most sort of streamlined in that. And so that's what part of the executive restructure was mm -hmm. about. So that, so looking at dealing with the finances day to day, launching this trade show for Miami, which is going to be really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, there's such an appetite for it um, and getting the rebrand going. And then of course the uh, advocacy efforts, you know, so I'm in Washington DC and talking to lawmakers there. So I would say, and then meeting new members and, and recruiting new members in. So to the point about the people that felt a little disenfranchised over mm -hmm. time, like eh, maybe it's not for me or it's, they're not representing what I want to do. It's important for me that we become that. So I want to know, you know, well, what is it going to take? What do you want? And so with that, Actually, I have some proposals to change the structure of our board. We have mm -hmm. a board meeting next week, so we'll see um, how that goes. I think warning shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think there's going to be some some receptivity to it, and, and sort of broadly. And I've said this, so I mean, is that I think we need to have a uh, real focus on our board for the National Health and Fitness Alliance, which is our public policy arm. Mm -hmm. So the people that are are really doing the advocating for us on the front lines, and our industry supplier committee. So our suppliers that are such an integral part of our organization and the suppliers that are 
um, you know, a, a technology companies, billing companies, equipment manufacturers, mm -hmm. those folks are critical to what we do and they should get a say. And they, I think that they get a, a vote. And this is my, I mean, I don't know that I'll, you know, we'll see the board meetings next week, but, but a lot of big things like that and, and a lot of appetite for change, which is nice. That's great. So you're dug in on Capitol Hill. How much are you looking at the work? Because ESSA is represented right around the world. Um, how focused are you on that or is it just sort of get things uh, right at home? Well, we need to get things right at home, but we need to get things right internationally as well. And so one of the things we talked about so much is that what is the value proposition mm. for international companies, federations versus domestic, and is it the same? Mm. Yeah, that's a and good point. Yeah. I think that the answer is that they're not the same. Mm -hmm. And one reason being is that to advocate effectively in one country, or in one country, the U.S., let alone with 50 states, mm -hmm. is, I mean, is an impossible task, really, to be a really good advocate all the time on behalf of everybody in one country. So to think that we're going to go do that in every country around the world is nuts. But there are so many international bodies, right? There's, what can we be doing with the WHO? What can we be doing with UNESCO? What can we be doing to bring all of the federations together, right? The, the UK actives, the Oz active, the China fit, and you know who can be almost like the G20 convener, right, of all of these folks? And I think that's where we see our space as a, as a convener and a, you know, an international sort of policy advisor to these, to these bodies that are, you know, creating standards and certifications and uh, areas like that on the international front, which is much different than advocacy in the U.S., where, you know, we could advocate on auto renewal policy or music rights or, you know. It seems like a yeah. big, broad area. Like, we were talking about it before in terms of, you know, what what's the arena that, that we're in? You know, we a lot of the people we know uh, have been used to go to Ursa and we kind of define ourselves in a particular way and coming to events like this it seems that the space that we're all in is kind of being dwarfed by something much bigger that's going on you talked about recovery just as a as a small section then there was group exercise then then there's what's happening at places like this and I suppose um, over the last sort of few years it seems that there's a lot of different areas that that are part of the space that are not necessarily seen, even, even people, connections, organizations, suppliers, solutions that, that are not part of us. And I, I guess it's like, how do you define the sort of edges of what you guys will do? And, and, and yeah, you know, where does it start and stop? Because um, a, even a lot of fitness clubs, personal training studios, um, boutique studios that are not necessarily either represented or you don't see them engaged with yeah. it. So is, is your goal to kind of maybe expand that and kind of, you know, try and get more people around the edges involved? Or is it like, no, we're, what is it, health and rackets, which is kind of, what does that used to be like? Uh, Several like, war sports ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. No, it is absolutely the latter. I am a, I am a builder, I am a collaborator, and I want everybody in this tent. And I think we need everybody in this tent to make our voice legitimized, Badger. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's why I've talked to ACE and IDEA and groups like that on the, you know, the training side and how do we get more just trainers involved with us. You mentioned studios. We have a whole new section of category membership for studios, but there are also other groups out there that represent studios. And so I'm talking to those conferences. And so I'm, I'm kind of everywhere yeah. <laughs> and because I want everybody and I want everybody to feel like they've got a home someplace. So that's the start. I don't know where the stop is. That's right. a good question. Right, and, I, right. and I'm, I'm, I'm hard to stop. So I think what <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> scary. <laughs> you even. know, I think like, yeah, right. Like, so we, we got to get nice, home. nice face, but scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kill them, let's wink, just wink. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, you got to have your core and then you go, you know, and then you slowly kind of go out from there. And that's why the rebrand is bigger than a rebrand. It's mm -hmm. an organizational transformation about mm -hmm. who we are and where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And it's why we need to have some identifier that makes all of those groups feel like they mm -hmm. have a home. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I mean, I have spent time with the Sport Fitness Industry Association, mm -hmm. the American Heart Association. Uh, I mean, it is alphabet soup, and, yeah. uh, and the good news is, like, in Washington, D.C., they're all there, right. and everybody has a, a, a D, an office in Washington, D.C., mm. so those are all sort of the International Franchise Association. He and I, the president of IFA and I are dear friends, so talk, you know, talking about that and how we get more of these franchises focused on fitness, and, and so there's a lot happening there with, with sort of bigger, broader organizations, and then you go down to brands. 
and they're all there too. Mm. I mean, Nike office, Lululemon office, Weight Watchers office, United Healthcare. I, like the <coughs> sky is really in the limit. So I got to be careful that I don't go st like so crazy there because again, yeah, we got to get so we got to get everybody one. in the tent, and we yeah. got to be able yeah. to, when we speak as a unifying voice, we need to be. I need to have all of those brands that I can say are members. And they're getting there. They're coming in and we just got to get them all. And there's, it's, I suppose it's a, it must be difficult for you because there is the traditional people that have been there for a long time. But it's also, as, a, as an outsider, you know, I came from Europe and I used to come to Ursa for many years, for about 20 years. And, but you, it always used to also be kind of a little bit clicky and there's this club of, of sort of people. And, and in some ways that club, I suppose, was a little bit of a downfall because some of these ideas didn't move on. And, and, and then things built up around it. So I suppose it's how do, how do you balance protecting the tradition, and I'm not, not yeah. so using the word old, but, but evolving with the new and kind of bringing everybody with you. Is that, is that kind of one of the key things that you're trying to do is to set this new vision and try and sort of bring everybody, including the, the people the that stuck with, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> with you at the same time? Yeah, yeah, and it's why, it's why part of this transformation process is gonna actually involve a lot of voices. It won't just be URSA staff, it won't just be URSA board, it'll, it, it's gonna go another layer, that another voices. layer, right. Uh, because it is about having sort of the old school voices, the founders, mm. and the voices of tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's why I'm spending, <clears throat> again, time with all of them and, and thinking about... And we stand on the shoulders of the legacy, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like there's respect there. And, exactly. A thousand and there's new ways of doing things, so... Right, right. And, you know, and then not running away from diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. I mean... I hear a lot, like, oh, with this industry of all these old white guys. Well, every industry is old white guys. Yeah. Like, it's not, honestly, yeah. like, it's not just us, right? <laughs> so it's about how do we get sort of new, you know, people that are on the bench up into leadership mm. and more in the management of that. Yeah. And so you need a strong board that's going to do that. And that's what's exciting about our board is we have a, we have a great board and, and we're going to bring more people on and then sort of change the dynamics of just other voices like we talked about earlier. And so... It starts with leadership there, and then you know there's some other councils and sort of committee restructure and things that I want to mm -hmm. get going there. And you know it won't happen overnight, but I believe that having more of these voices at the table, uh, they're weighing in on all this, makes us stronger versus a sort of small concentrated set mm -hmm. of, of folks, whether it be old school or new. I mean, people are opinionated. I'll tell you. I mean, there's there's lots of opinions, maybe a couple egos. But. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea what you're talking about. Thank you for supporting the Escape Your Limits podcast. If you're thinking about creating a unique and engaging fitness space to take your fitness to the next level, then we have you covered. Escape Fitness design and manufacture some of the most innovative, attractive, and durable functional training and free weight equipment used by many of the best trainers and fitness brands across the globe. As a valued listener, we are offering you a 10% discount off many of the products on our website. You can check out the full range by going to escapefitness.com and use the code DUMBELL. That's escapefitness.com using the code DUMBELL. That's it for me. Please enjoy the rest of this interview. How has it, when you came into and, and decided to take on the role, um, has, the, has it sort of, and I guess it always changes, but how? What, what are some of the big differences from when you kind of looked at, okay, this is going to be an interesting challenge to, as Emma said, you know, 100 days in, where how you kind of see what you let yourself in for now. The reality. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to get real? And how to yeah, we want you to get real. Yeah, 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 Have yeah. the other half and yeah, then yeah. get real, real. <laughs> So listen, I mean, it was a pretty extensive interview process that I went through. I mean, I went through eight rounds of interviews with all kinds of various stakeholders. Wow. So in every round, I peeled back a little layer of that onion and saw, oh, okay, that's going to be something we got to deal with. Oh, we got to deal with that, right? And you don't really know until you get in. And here I am. And the good news is that You're I, still here. I am still here. That is good <laughs> We're in the second 100 days. <laughs> no, but it's that we have a great team. And, and you know... I think that when challenged, and everybody has seen this with so many of your staffs, is who rises up? You know, who who is putting on another hat? Who is filling another job that they didn't necessarily hire to do, and they're not being paid to do it? 
but they're doing it for the good of the industry. And we've got a lot of those people on our team, which is really inspiring. People that really are working hard and creative and problem solvers. And so I'm really excited to represent the staff. And I think that have been through a very traumatic, mm-hmm. you know, year and a half. And, and they've been at the front lines of this organization. So, so I think that that's one thing that that I'm continuing to sort of look at, um, you know, or, you know, where we've gone or what, what I've figured out sort of since then, right? Also, who are the voices in the industry that you can leverage behind the scenes? Mm-hmm. And there's quite a few of those. And so I've got little whispers out there and connections and all that going on, and which has been really spectacular because you need somebody that is a trusted vote of confidence. I mean, I'm new and I think I'm building it, right? But, but I'm new. And so... That's been really exciting to sort of to see that and to learn that. And then, you know, to, to just learn more about the Boston operation, uh, you know, and originally I was like, ah, we don't need a Boston office. Well, there's quite a great culture going on up there. Mm-hmm. And so I believe we could probably have that. And then I can build out the future in, in Washington for every new hire that mm-hmm. we, you know, where we go there. And that's one thing we've learned, too, is right in a crazy hybrid world. We don't all need to be anywhere, anytime, anyway. You know, you can, you know, where you're not, you're not working from home. You're living at work. So how we can, you know. And it's interesting. Like even this, even this forum here, there's a bunch from Boston. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Whoop's not here, but Whoop's there. You've yeah. also got Lightboxer. Like so, there's a bunch of because I guess of all the the sweatshirt schools over there, and then people sort of stay close to home. So you know, that's interesting. I think as the industry involves to be. Because we, we were joking earlier in, in, in the opening address, you know, <laughs> half the people I know from LA have moved to Austin or Florida. Yeah. So there's been this huge, everyone's gone. But what I'm finding is there's a bunch of people in Boston, yeah. you know, for those reasons. So it's not a place, not a bad place to be as you're pitching the future. Yeah, and you know what yeah. else is in Boston? <clears throat> a lot of amazing educational, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. facilities. So we've got partnerships with Harvard and MIT and all 100%. these, you know. And, these, and, and education's is- going through this absolute revolution absolutely yeah. right and that's one thing that i i've said so much you know is that we need to be tying ourselves as close as we possibly can to the medical community and the best in the world you yeah know? right yeah. and but that we are preventative health that exercise is movement and we say that amongst ourselves that, that kind of just is swirling around here yeah. like that's not going on out here right so how do we have a campaign an externally facing campaign that's going to do more of that um, and really tie the, the, that piece to it. And it's and I think it's these clubs that have figured out partnerships with insurance brokers that I'm trying to learn more about, and it's like making my head explode. But I, but that is such an amazing verifier, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. That, you know, just getting up and moving is, you know, is making us live longer. Mm-hmm. And, and I've, you know, the... I've said this is that the crisis of, of COVID, you know, you never waste a crisis. And so that's what we can do now is that if there's one thing that people have realized is that type two diabetes and obesity are the number, you know, one and two cause of COVID death. Like, mm-hmm. even if you're not that smart on medical stuff, a lot of average people know that now. Mm-hmm. So how can <clears throat> we be just using that basic narrative to get people moving? And then you go another level on mental health Right. And what exercise does to mental health and how exercising for five minutes can can change your mental health. Right. So you don't need to necessarily be going and, you know, doing 45 minutes of deadlifts. Right. Mm -hmm. Like just go outside and walk your dog and and feel better. And so as so I just believe, I mean, movement in any any way that we can do it um, is is strongly encouraged. So if you are somehow in, in the encouraging movement space, like. Come you were on, come about on, that on the yeah. other interview earlier yeah. on, the, the guy was talking about COVID and how the industry, it was a great opportunity for, and I, and I know it's easier said than done, but it was a great opportunity for the industry to sort of be leading and say, well, there are alternatives. Um, who, who was the gentleman we spoke to? Was that on camera or off? We spoke to so many people. Um, was uh, it the today. genome guy? Genome, genomics guy? I, I think so, but it, it, essentially, I, th- I think it was like, look, we've been as an industry, we've been through such an important time for health and fitness. Yes, there's a big argument for for the prevent uh, for the what is it called, like the cure, the 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 medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, that's great, just as there is in 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 everyday life. But there's also a massive opportunity for fitness to be. Um, being a lot more at the at the forefront, and I, and I guess in your experience, and I understand you've done some stuff with the um, what do you call it? The hill is that the term? The yeah, Capitol Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of learning the, <laughs> the Mr. Jingo. UK over here. <laughs> 
So in the hill. Mr. Brexit. <laughs> Mr. Brexit. No, on the hill. On, on the, the hill. hill. On the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like in the hood. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> in the hood. In on the, the hood. Hill, on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> So, so like, do you, is is there work to be done there to be able to kind of push that message through and and to have more of a voice as opposed to you know it does seem to be one directionally. It's like okay, get your jabs and and stay at home and do all that kind of stuff. Could there be something else to balance that out? Absolutely, think? and it's why um, you know we're working with the Physical Activity Alliance, people like MyZone, to talk about exactly on Capitol Hill you know, how we can get these people more engaged in a direct staff way, right? And then the staff bring it to their bosses. So a thousand percent getting Congress involved and engaged and educated on fitness. I'll tell you, there is a Congressional Doctors Caucus, and I and I know some of those members on that caucus, and they get it, of course, right? Mm-hmm. And so how do we get those <clears throat> members of Congress talking to their colleagues about mm-hmm. why, you know, exercise matters and and that you know we are a more affordable solution than the four the trillion dollars that we have in healthcare costs. And so, is it an education problem? Is it the fact that the people that are making these decisions are not educated, or is it that there's uh, there's <coughs> stronger lobbying <laughs> in other areas? <laughs> that if we're being honest, <laughs> yeah, it's, bo- it's both. It's both. Okay. Um, you know, so there is a lack of education, and we'll be able to do that, no problem. But it's, it is about money. But the reason being, and and it money it makes the whole process sound ugly, but it's not. Because what happens is you you think you're a member of Congress. There's 435 members of Congress, okay? I talked to my friend um, in the height of the pandemic, and she represented a small little district in New Hampshire, not even somebody in an L.A. district or a New York district. And she said, we're getting fifty to 60,000 calls a week for one tiny little district, right? How do you differentiate yourself from that? So, I mean, it's great to make the phone calls. They're important. But how is this member of Congress going to weed through all that? Well, you got to get in front of them. Well, mm-hmm. how do you get in front of them? You support their campaign, and then you're in front of them, <laughs> right? And even then, it, I mean, there are thousands of lobbyists and people that mm-hmm. are doing that. But then you do that in a more personal way. You, you know, they have fundraising trips that you go on. And so you, and it <clears> sounds <throat> hoity-toity, but it's truly <laughs> like if you go on a golf trip with a member of Congress and you're with a member of Congress for three days golfing, Guess what? Like when I need somebody, they remember me because they haven't, you know. How's your golf game? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's very good, I'll tell you. Yeah, so I mean, not as good now because our, our Ursa pack is we're just in the building stages. But like those, there's smart ways to spend the money, and it's mm-hmm. you know, and you do it so that you can have a relationship. And I've I've told this story before, and it's not a like, this is not a quick pro quo, whatever that phrase is, but. Mm. In candy, we had this go on where I had a relationship with Senator Duckworth in Illinois. Illinois is a big candy producing state. And because we had supported her, because she supported us over time, we never really asked her for anything, but I kept staying in front of her, staying in front of her through PAC dollars because we want her to get reelected. Well, I was, the day before I was scheduled to be on a a one-on-one Zoom with the senator, the governor had said, well, we want candy manufacturing to take a pause in manufacturing because of COVID, and um, and I went, well, that's not happening. And so I talked to the senator next day, I said, Senator, hey, your governor is like trying to get crazy with us. And she said, okay, let me make a phone call. <laughs> and then boom, like candy manufacturing remained essential in Illinois. Wow. That was a relationship, right. right? And I had that relationship because I had the funds to be able to stay in front of her. It was the, the reality. She's dangerous. I really like her. This yeah. plan might just work. <laughs> I also didn't realize that that was like, it, so it's, it, essentially it's all about who you know, really. If you God know bless right America, people. welcome. <laughs> yes. It's, yeah, it's who you know and how well you and know how, them. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and so it's why what we've done in the last year and a half has been phenomenal, yeah. like to get in front of them and to be known and to have half of our states having state alliances, right, that are active and, and creating councils and meeting. And then we've just launched the 435 project, which I'm so excited about. So which nice. is a project to have one fitness representative from all 435 congressional districts across the country so that when we have an issue or something comes up, boom, we and hit the button and then you're the captain Congress. of that district <laughs> and you activate your gyms and you <clears throat> activate everybody in that district and then we, we you know, package it all up and take it to their member of Congress. And, you, and, you know, and now, boom, you've just done you know, 50,000 phone calls 
with right. one captain. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. This is making New Zealand feel very small. <laughs> I could almost ring the four and a half million people that live here. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, man. Yep. Wow. So that's a, that's a bit of a... So really, it, it's okay from what you're doing, it's, you've, you've kind of got the people that... Um, the suppliers and the connections and the relationships on one side, but then the other part is is developing and, and building a team to develop relationships so you've got more weight with the people that make the decisions about how fitness is viewed and how much kind of, you know, how much airtime it kind of gets in a lot of these initiatives. Yep. What did you think about them kind of not making fitness essential through that? Do you think that was the right thing to do? Or, you know, if it happened again... You know, what, what, what do you do things? Like uh, you know, there's there's a lot of frustrations in politics, and um, you know, as somebody who's been doing this my whole life, you have to um, just be aware of that. And so, actually, as positive of a person I am when it comes to politics, I'm actually fairly pessimistic, and I'm always pleasantly surprised if they, or if realist they, maybe, you know, if if they do something. This was going to be an uphill battle from the get go for us to get relief because we weren't there on day one. Mm. Who? And, yeah, <laughs> Who? What? <laughs> yeah, you know, and so again, we organized as quickly as we could. We came to the table as most effectively as we could, and that was great. And we built a great foundation. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. And I'll tell you, if you want to get real specific, the why, without getting all wonky and nerd on you, but it came down to needing ten Republican senators that were going to vote for this omnibus package, not just Jim's relief. Mm -hmm. The entire package. Mm -hmm. um, now, you need some real champions if they real are grunt. going to, to, to make a, a, a vote like that for one sort of pet issue, mm -hmm. if you will, right? And we just didn't have it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, now I'm not even sure if the restaurants have it, frankly. And, mm. you know, and the restaurant association, they've been around for 100 years and they're, you know, a $200 million organization. So, so we'll see who remains like to get in. Um, but it was not all for naught by, by any means. It, um, and, it, and we are on the map and we are on the radar with these people. And so we've got members of Congress that are going to be pissed off, that are going to want to do something. And so we've got the FIT Act already ready to go. The mm -hmm. FIT Act is something that would allow your health savings account dollars to be used to join gym memberships. And so there's a great appetite for that. And so we can just pivot this energy to that mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and then ride it out write it out from there and then go beyond. I mean, mm. fits like pretty narrow and, but you know, you got to start somewhere. You got to have a win. Um, you know, you got to have a win, but they're hard to get. So that's why it's important to be working at the state level uh, where, where state wins are a little bit easier than, than federal and federal takes time, takes, yeah. takes a lot of time. And then when you get wrapped up in something like an omnibus package that is impacted by Ukraine and Russia, yeah. mm, you know, tough, tough to have your, you know, your voice heard through that. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the US Politics 101. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is how we do it. Yeah. We're all in this together. Yeah. <laughs> just a not. mess, just a mess. Yeah. <laughs> now you're officially an American. I am an American. <laughs> You've got your papers. I have. I'm staying. You are. I'm staying. Last we're month. We're stuck with you. You're stuck I with me. It. Yes. Oh, Congrats. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. That's great. Amazing. Amazing. So what can we expect now for the next sort of 12 to, to 18 months then? You've got, you've done. Please stay. Yeah, let's please, let's yeah. start with that. Yeah. <laughs> please stay. You. Hopefully Thank you're going. going to be around. But, yeah. Um, yes. Well, I have a three year contract, so you, we're, you're stuck with me for, for a little while. Um, listen, we're going to continue to push new policy fronts and to build this coalition of, of people on Capitol Hill that all want the same thing. So that's going to be really exciting. And we're going to have a phenomenal trade show. Mm -hmm. We're going to announce a rebrand, a rebirth Ooh. of this organ, you know, of this yeah. organization's industry. Mm -hmm. And I have kind of a crazy idea on how it's going to happen. I'm calling it the opening ceremonies okay. of the of the Ursa show. Okay, good. And um, and it will involve a handful of voices okay. from the industry. Good. If I'm if I get my way. Yeah. Um, I, I, sure. I feel like she'll <laughs> get her way. I mean, good luck going up again. <laughs> That. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and then we'll sort of, and then we got to get ready for, we got, you know, San Diego, you know, after that, well, we, but like, but we're not only about a trade show, yeah, yeah. trade show, major revenue, you know, maker for us, and it takes a lot of, a lot of effort, but I'm just excited to build out our policy future, and to build these coalitions, and to create 
a conversation around health and that mm -hmm. it were a part of it and to, and to create the identity because nobody has done it and nobody has certainly brought everybody together. And, and there's been a lot of organizations, people, energy that have felt left behind. And, you know, I, I, it's a new day and it's why I want everybody in the tent. And even if we ha can't figure out necessarily what that means, let's get creative. Let's, let's figure out whatever joint memberships and joint partnerships and all of that, um, you know, because I'm not threatened. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that any of that is a threat to our existence. I think we are on all street, stronger together. On street, have you brushed up with Big Pharma? Because in a way, fundamentally, we're against that yes. as a preventative health solution. Yeah, it's a great question and not yet. Well, right. I think honestly we're a couple of years away from that right, right. because we're not even organized enough to be They a, can't hear us at all. There's a, no whispers. There's no yeah, 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 right. But exactly, like for their industry, they would love somebody to have sort of like be on Lipitor their whole life, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And not of course. And yeah. their kids and their and their and their yeah. Yeah. They would never say that, right? No. Yeah. But well some of them will actually, but <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah, right, exactly. So yeah, so we're not there yet, and that's not gonna be our first problem by right. any means. Right. Wow. Good. I'm just going to say, wow. Yeah, that was, well, it was, uh, and then finally, I need to ask this. So what do you think about the Connected Fitness event? What's, what's, been, what's been your experience here? I mean, I am overwhelmed and wildly impressed. I, I mean, all of these entrepreneurs are like blowing my mind. I would not be able to do any of what they do and to come up with these creative programming and everything. And just, of course, the networking is phenomenal. And of course, the organization is phenomenal. And so I'm just thrilled to be here and just see, I mean, everybody wants to be together. And mm -hmm. so, but then to have such good content and such a great platform around it, I, I mean, fantastic event. So I'm thrilled to be here. Right. Well, great. thanks for spending Thank your you time so and, uh, yeah. and enjoying the wine together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you've got your 12th meeting of today. So. Yeah, I'm going to go run to that. Yeah. Only yeah. a couple minutes late. Thank you right. so Sorry. much. You Thank you guys. very much. See you in so Miami. Much. Yes. <laughs> see you in Miami. Just incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, then please go over to iTunes and subscribe to the Escape Your Limits podcast. Leave a review, leave a comment. It really would help us a lot to continue to keep these going.